Today, we're headed up to a rail yard y'all know very well by now, but not necessarily to rail fan. This go round, we'll be getting a rare look inside the famous locomotive shops and catch at least a glimpse of how a big class one railroad operates from the inside. We'll also get to meet the incredible people and machinery that make it all tick. From hilarious stories, to impressive machinery, and of course, plenty of interest in motive power. This shop started out as what employees have described as a full service gas station for trains. Used to, all they ever did here was light and emergency maintenance. But ever since they closed the big West Burlington shops in 2004, the amount and variety of work done here increased drastically. Like most locomotive shops, there's a definite way in which engines flow through here. The north side is where defective units wait to be shopped. It's also where they're inspected, so the mechanics can get a good idea what kind of work needs to be done. And when possible, locomotives are serviced out here too. It's usually just light maintenance, like replacing brake shoes, AC units, or taking down loads. Then, on the south side of the shops is where repaired locomotives are put through their paces. While there's several tests that are performed to ensure repairs are successful, the coolest one is the load test. This is where they cut load into the traction motors and crank the throttle all the way up to notch 8. They let the engine run wide open for about an hour or so. And if there ain't any problems, then it's good to go. But of course, inside the shop is where most of the magic happens. While I'd love to give y'all a full tour, we unfortunately have limited time here. The wheel true buildings are main focus of this trip, which we'll see in a separate video, but I'll at least show you what I can. As luck would have it, sitting on track two is good old 1755, a Santa Fe SD40-2 that we've seen many times on this channel. And while we're up close, we can get a good look at its numbers, which have been restored to the same font and colors they would have been on the Santa Fe. This work was done by graffiti artists, likely the same ones that restored 552's long hood. An often overlooked aspect of these locomotive shops are the two attached warehouses. Inside them is just about every locomotive part you can think of. There's rad fans that are almost eight foot in diameter, gaskets of every shape, size, and material, water pumps, window panes, horns, refrigerators, hoses, high voltage stickers, and still much more. Unfortunately, the railroad wouldn't let me film in there. But if you want a visual, just Google a parts warehouse, and that's about what they look like. Under the platform, we can see what this locomotive is in the shop for. Burnt traction motor leads, which was causing the motors to not load correctly. This might look severe, but burnt leads are a relatively common defect and are easily fixable. 1755 should be fit as a fiddle within a shift or two. This big area around track two is used for just about any and all maintenance required below the frame of the locomotive. Usually, just traction motor work is done here, but they also maintain brake rigging, airlines, couplers, trucks, sanitary equipment, and still much more. Track one doesn't have a lower area like this, but it does have a full length inspection pit. Usually they do heavier maintenance here, while this shop might be small by railroad standards, it and its people are extremely capable. They're able to perform almost every kind of maintenance short of overhauls and major body work. Another cool thing down here is the drop pit. This is a 24 foot deep pit that stretches under both tracks. It has a special lift in it that's used to raise and lower traction motors into place when changing them out. And if you thought 1755 was cool, then guess what other locomotive was sitting on track two? 669 here works the hump set, and in true GE fashion, it's here for a turbo change out, which is one of the most involved repairs this shop does. The turbochargers in these things are about three foot tall, and they kind of take a village to replace. Part of the long hood will have to be pulled to get this job done. One thing you'll notice on many hump set war bonnets is that they're missing their plow. This is done so the engine can clear the retarders at the bottom of the hump. Typically, hump locomotives just have their plow raised a few inches, but for whatever reason, the railroad decided to fully remove it on the Dash 9s. 
One quirk about railroad rules is that you have to flag up any engine you're working on, or even walking on, but if you're just using it to get from one platform to another, you don't have to flag up. It's kind of weird, but they probably implemented that exception for convenience. Here, we can see a little bit of the aux cab. This is the secret electrical room I mentioned in this video a few months back. Housed in here is pretty much every electrical circuit and switch for the locomotive. And being in here is kind of dicey. It's cramped and covered wall to wall in industrial electrical equipment, much of which has exposed contacts. While the idiot bar and door sensor keep you safe by shutting off power to the room, that doesn't mean you shouldn't stay alert. Some of the most spectacular failures I've seen happen in the aux cab. Locomotives have bus bars that can be several feet long and up to half an inch thick, and when conditions are just wrong, they essentially explode at their contact points. It's pretty cool to see the aftermath. Speaking of cabs, how about we take a look inside 669 here? As a rail fan, I think it's always a privilege anytime you get to go in the cab of a locomotive. What I always find cool on these old Santa Fe GEs is the little logo they have at the bottom of this screen. Unfortunately, I've yet to see one that's not scratched out. Other than that, it's just like any other vintage GE cab. Santa Fe locomotives were quite literally built different. Instead of using an A1 valve to stop brake pipe charging in the event of an emergency, they used two HB5 relays largely for no other reason except the whole railroad was behind the times when it came to how they operated during their last years. Today, all remaining ATSF engines have since had an A1 charging valve installed. Since locomotives are complex, potentially dangerous industrial machines, they're thoroughly inspected top to bottom every 92 days, per FRA requirements. During one of these inspections, they also perform light maintenance, such as calibrating gauges, changing brake pads, emptying sanitary equipment, etc. In every 184 days, they get that same inspection with a little bit heavier maintenance. This includes changing oil filters, fuel filters, air filter media, a few gaskets, and maybe a mag valve or two. They also have their fluids topped off and diagnostic downloads taken. And every 368 days, they get even heavier maintenance. This includes everything listed in the 184 day inspection, plus a change out of exhaust gaskets, select coolant circuit gaskets, horn magnet valves, main reservoir pop-off valves, air filters proper, turbo seals, and still much more. Of course, any other necessary repairs are liable to be made during any of these inspections too. Unfortunately, our limited time here means this is about all I can show y'all from the locomotive shops. But before we move on to the wheel-true building, how about we meet with some of the employees and hear a couple stories about some outlandish events that have happened at this facility over the years. Good times. Well, what about the pink teddy bear? Uh, yeah, that's where they thought it was a bomb and then they had to like evacuate everybody here. Holy and shit. This was out late. This was like... It was third shift. It went into, the, into third shift. And then as everybody's evacuating and outside that way, the bomb squad was coming from Peoria. From Springfield. From Springfield? And we're just all talking, laughing, all of a sudden somebody comes around the corner and somebody's like, Hey, who's that? And then I know someone's like, Hey, that's And everyone's like, Hey, it's yeah. And all of a sudden someone's like, What's that in his hand? He's got a pink teddy bear. He's fucking walking, not happy. And he just comes back and says, Everybody get back. And everybody just like, yeah. everybody just walked past it. Okay, who, who thought it was a bomb? No, I don't know. No, I think it was a guy. Because I was a man that night. He came up, and then it was an NS motor facing north. It was, it was, it was I remember when I called for and I told him, yeah, we just had a suspicious, opera. we just had a suspicious right. teddy bear show up on the, on the, uh, uh, locomotive, and we just had a, uh, uh, yeah, a safety okay. class, All were like, and then I said, I said, and, and in the safety class, was, there was a stuffed animal on a tank car, and uh, it was a, a bomb. And mm -hmm. as soon as I said bomb, oh, uh, shit. all this stuff happened. 
Oh yeah. Oh, we still have we a walked, We <laughs> walked into the office. It's yeah. Yeah. Good. yeah, it's in your office. Oh, what about the butter I'm on the ceiling? Like, People throwing butter up that on the one? ceiling? Yeah, because I cleaned it all myself personally with a scissor <laughs> lift. It took yeah. me three quarters of a shift. And I'll tell you. And I've I never heard of this one. Oh, and I'm not even, I didn't even throw any of the butter. And yet, I went up and I just cleaned all these. Oh, if you walk through the machinist area right now, don't know you look straight up, you're going to see a whole bunch of joy. What the? Yeah. Every one of those is going to scrape and scrape the side butter out of the nose. I don't really? see that. I've never heard of this story. This is really? Good. Okay, so you know the individual uh, square rectangular package yeah, of yeah, Western yeah, stubbies. So they, yeah, so they open it with the wrapper on it and then just whoosh, and then to, you know, it would stick and then when it would get <laughs> hot in the summer it would just melt like, sorry, and it would drip right in the top. So. Oh my but God. it was there so long that it completely ate away the paint and stained it. <laughs> but I mean, it's like, <laughs> oh, it's painted. It is painted dotted dotted. Above that, you get a chance to look. I was going to when I walked back through here. That's yeah, amazing. They put that in their stomach. Oh, that's cool. Oh, it's even funnier is that as I'm cleaning it, the people who did it would just walk by here. I could just laugh at me. <laughs> that's tough. But hindsight, it's a good laugh. Good story. Thanks for watching. If y'all enjoyed this video, consider checking out some other ones of mine. Also, please consider supporting the channel on Coffee and do pass yourself by the merch shop. Anyways, till next time.